most, if not all of you, already know that motion pictures is the art of audiovisual, through which stories are told or messages are conveyed in an entertaining way in order to grab your interest and attention for a period of time. Hey, come on in. I'm glad you made it. So I didn't have room at the house. Once my daughter was born, things got small, so decided to build a little post-production studio here. Um, I mostly do one-to-one -one recording, focusing on audio post-production for film, uh, whether it's commercial, narrative, but I like the big stuff. I like the big sound. I like the special effects. I, I love the foley. Um, I, I just love putting it all together and trying to make it sound bigger than life. So, you know, you come on over here, it's just get, you know, I don't have anything too, too special, but uh, what really is the uh, important ingredient, uh, the right plugins, the ability to know how to use them, um, using, uh, you know, I like to work, as they call it, top down. I just uh, want to keep things organized um, as visually organized as possible so I know exactly what I'm working with uh, oftentimes these projects will take 36 42 different tracks uh, just before we get into the mixing process and the mastering process but you know I have a few little things that uh, I just love to use primarily in my DAW I'm using uh, a lot of different plugins and I have my go-to's and my favorites uh, whether it's isotope ozone or uh, fab filter but uh, the instrument sound quality, the special effect quality, um, it's just, uh, it's big, and, uh, and I love big. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of DOS software out there. A lot of people have their own preferences. Um, I become very comfortable, and uh, people will scoff at it, but I enjoy using Logic, and it uh, works for me very well. haven't found any limitations, but... Um, so when I talk about putting audio together, sometimes people send me tracks of their band. I'll bring them into my DAW, and uh, they want me to give a little bit of a mix. So maybe I can just give you a little example of what subtlety, just a little bit of subtlety can provide to audio tracks that uh, have been pre-recorded uh, but haven't been put together and uh, cued and processed. You know, just uh, to bring it alive and make it sound real. They sent me their audio track. And uh, they sent them as WAV files. The way a story is expressed on the television tube or silver screen varies drastically from one filmmaker to the next. The artistic freedom to interpret or to express an idea or a concept in motion pictures or audiovisual is tremendously flexible as it also requires a long and painful process as well as huge collaborative effort with other creative individuals. The work that goes into making a film can be a daunting task and very expensive to achieve at times. There are three major steps or processes that are required in order to successfully make a short or feature film. The first step is pre-production. No, we, you know, it's just got to be somebody who's like fastidious Julian and Turner. Turner. Sure. Julian Turner. Where's that printer? Downstairs. Yeah. The second is production. Page six, interrogation scene. Take one. Interrogation scene one. one. Okay. We'll just say you want to take home scenes, go home. And then right. And action. Is this, is this your office? And the last is post-production. I've been studying a lot about uh, the process of the post-production and uh, the field capture, of course, uh, the live audio producer that had got to get as good dialogue as you can. But um, most of the time, the dialogue is coming in after the, after the fact. And it uh, leaves the producer an opportunity to, to even change some lines.
but uh, also uh, the environment, the ambience comes in after the, after the fact, and um, all of the sound, walking, cars, kissing, breathing, uh, all of that comes in after the, after the fact, and uh, being able to get the cues and the stings and the special effects, it, uh, nowadays people expect to have a, the full spectrum of audio right down from the bottom where it, you know, it just kind of rumbles deep inside your chest to be able to separate the different sounds along uh, the audible spectrum where you can place things just right so uh, the audience really feels that they're, that they're there. And uh, most importantly, the, the ears can uh, really fool you. You never really want um, to oversaturate the sound. And even if you're in a big, loud environment, when we're talking with somebody and a bus is going by, our mind focuses our ears uh, to make the conversation we're having louder so we're able to hear that person even though uh, the surrounding is blowing up around us. So um, we can't oversaturate the sound in a movie. If you really did that, it it doesn't work. So um, putting the elements together properly, having them all working together and sounding right, uh, mixing it in with the score and the special effects cues, um, that's what I want to do. As simple each one of them may sound, they are all composed of many moving parts or elements that need to be bound together as a unit in order to produce the ultimate masterpiece that you will enjoy on the silver screen with your friends and family members. I stole this phone, I stole this necklace, this watch, and oh, check this out, church, and I got sick. Well, let's break it all down, shall we? Before you even think of making a movie, you will first need to have a story or an idea that you want to express. Once you are inspired by the idea or concept, then you will need to put it down on paper. And this process or format is known as the script. Usually, the idea that you put on paper or the first write-up is considered as the first draft simply because it is usually not the final or refined work. The basic standard format or number of pages for a feature film is 90 pages. But the limitation doesn't stop there as you have your artistic freedom to make a movie that surpasses the 90 minute mark. Titanic and Gone with the Wind will be perfect examples of extended feature films. Now that you have your script depicting an interesting tale with all the characters and the locations therein, now the work and the headaches, if you wish to name it as such, has just begun. Since there are a multitude of other things to prepare and collect. We're going with you, don't fuck it up, all right? So I like your you're early hours. Hours. You you work on it. It's okay. okay. I like your vibe. Right. And you're going to be in the makeup chair after, uh, okay, look. Okay. This version, definitely not the last. <laughs> Here's the first one. Here's the first one. Here's the first one. Here's the first one. That very last scene is now broken into four. So don't pay attention to that. We're going to just improvise our lives with it. Well, these are the manual. The other one taught me. What's this? No, you know what it is, Martha? Maybe they have to stop at noon this Saturday. You're going to have to, um... Um, we're just going to go with our actor because we're he's here. Why did it feel funny that LCD to ABC was an OCD? Yeah, it did. But they, they thought that that was much more offensive than ADD. ADD is like... It's okay now to make fun of it. OCD is still dangerous. It wasn't OCD, don't Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going with the Purell. Same kind of thing. We're focusing on ADD, so if we had something else, it might be too much. If you and I would, if you could do something else where you keep losing focus, I'd like it. Pick my nose. Even better. Go downstairs, the two of you, and we'll get, we'll shoot the scene right now. We're going to ad-lib. There's no script. Okay. What is that? 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 What is that?
I don't um, know if I can just oh, self hate yourself. Was it I'm gonna have self hating, self flagellating, and all that kind of crap? No, it's not going there. Okay? No, no, no. You're both professionals, even though you've never acted. This is gonna be great. <laughs> You're both professionals. I think I'm really. Wait, 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 who's the? He's gonna be the cop. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, you're gonna come up with a line. Okay, don't worry, I'll just keep going. You don't have to worry. So wait a second. But they're quick. He's interrogating me. Why? Because they caught me because I'm stealing things. Yes. All right. Do I care? Money, huh? The street devil, as we call it which all too often you need a lot of it to make movies of great magnitude or bigger production value. Nevertheless, we will not let that scare us away if we don't have the ability to break a bank, since good story, great acting, and wonderful collaboration can serve as a passport or visa to bypass the mega box that will be required for a big project. However, you will always need a budget of some sort, whether huge or small, because somehow you will always have to spend some money when making a film. One thing to also consider or bear in mind is that people's time and skills are the equivalent of money. Therefore, appreciation must be displayed toward others. Thinking about how beautiful he oh, is. Okay, I got you. And Sounds he's going to cut the, you know, the drone of him out there. Yeah. And then Danny says, Dad, you look terrific. Oh, the moon <laughs> the okay. Because it's like, you know, he's, you think he's like some kind of drag queen, and then he's never, you know, like, and then he just says to the kid, this innocent kid, Daddy, Dad, you look great. Production time is the physical action or of gathering all the players with the necessary tools or equipment at the, at the designated location in order to call lights, camera, and action. action. This process is subsequent to all that is required at the pre-production stage in order to execute it as a blueprint for maximum potential success in transforming a concept or an idea into a reality on the silver screen. Despite having a pre-production plan, note that things don't usually go as expected in filmmaking, but planning is surely much better than improvising. After wrapping up with uh, shooting the last scene of the script, we now enter the phase where magic will happen in the editing room. At this point, this is where every actor wishes that he or she was super nice to the film ed editor as their fate and their aesthetic appearance are in the hands of the editor. So before I open a project, typically the only uh, automated fader is one. Now, I have a, a much more expensive uh, automated fader console and uh, unfortunately it's down but so it, it's relatively important to me to have just so it gives me sometimes a an analog vision of what I'm doing or to help me give an, a, a quick understanding um, you know about where I may want things placed uh, without without prior to drawing in the automation and uh, so the automation project and uh, let's go ahead and open something up and you'll so this is a project that's already in the process of being uh, mixed and so if we open this up you can watch the faders you know correspond to the faders on my DAW. And then it, I can keep switching over, depending on how many tracks I have. Every time I'll move over to track nine, this switch o switches over f you know, from nine to 16. And then from 17 to 24, etc. It gives me eight tracks consecutively. So now it corresponds to my four bus channels and uh, my acoustic guitars. A lot of people are getting rid of them because drawing in automation, oftentimes, and uh, just to give you an idea, we'll, uh, so uh, now we're in the um, 
are we in the automation mode? Now we're in the automation mode here. So I can draw in adjustments. How do I want to fade in or fade out or pan left or pan right or uh, even just bring up the level to being able to, to duck that. But so oftentimes I'll just sit here and do that manually. Uh, let's just say I wanted to change the volume. I can select there's my baseline and then I can select dots along here and uh, and then I can draw the automation from there and you'll see that it's going to move and you'll watch it gets controlled by the fader as well I can see it there but I can put in as many points as I want uh, as many locations draw it in any which way I want drag it out uh, you know put in a couple of consecutive dots so you can move things up sharp I, you know drawing in the automation is essential for having the Foley uh, flow in and flow out seam for every track. Even the director depends heavily on the editor's ability and creativity to translate his or her vision into this magical world of fiction and reality into the final product. The editor has the power or the ability to make an actor look good or incompetent on screen depending on how he decides to make his cut. Normally, in the editing room, subtraction occurs more than addition takes place in order to reveal a more refined product that expresses the director's point of view in the final cut. Editing, um, well, my philosophy is in order to be the best at what I do and things that I may enjoy doing in the future, I I'd love to have it, uh, I recently wrote a script and uh, with somebody and uh, you can try my hand at directing it and a, a short piece and going through that whole process. So if I want to do something like that, I don't necessarily need to be an expert in it, but I have to understand what all of the different elements mean. If I want to be involved in the editing process, I have to have a basic understanding of Premiere and that's the tool that we'll be using. Um, if I want to do layered, uh, special effects um, and a lot, you know, different motion graphics. Uh, I'm using After Effects, so um, I definitely want to understand the elements that uh, I'm looking for and the tool that'll be used uh, to achieve that. Uh, when I'm looking at the audio, uh, understanding all of the different elements of the audio and uh, whatever with Pro Tools, uh, Logic, whatever we're using uh, to put that back all together. So you know, I want to, I want to understand. Uh, that process as well. So, um, I love to screw around in here with different things, and the beauty of it is, is I get to work uh, with amazing filmmakers. Uh, you with Matt uh, Norm and uh, Rick Maycomber, and I, I really get to watch uh, behind the scenes and you know see if, see the art on your end. I mean, people can technically grab a camera, but to understand the focal length and which lens will capture the scene best, what type of movement uh, to get and, uh, and to create the mood with the lighting. Uh, so uh, that just inspires me. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, I'm at a level where I can have a lot of fun and uh, maybe put together something uh, all by myself. That, that'll be fun, a good group. Good, a great crew where uh, people really are passionate about the positions that they're, uh, you know, the jobs uh, uh, and what they're doing, uh, filming, the audio, acting, uh, producing, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the grips and the assistants. It's, uh, we're very lucky. I mean, we, we have great resources, uh, and everybody loves working with each other. I mean, I'm too old to work with people I don't like. <laughs> Once the movie is complete, you then now enter the marketing phase, which requires a lot of time consuming and energy spent, as well as lavish expenditure. In this 48 hours film festival, the filmmaker and his team have to make a short film from scratch. 
from having a story idea to writing, shooting, and editing within the 48 hours deadline and submission. Let's roll the camera. Speed. Okay, this is the second take of the final shot, and here we go. So, how'd you do? I got the latest issue of Multi Home to Garden. Nice. Don't tell me you stole the dog. I didn't steal the dog. How about you, honey? Oh, I got a bottle of wine. What happened to it? Well, I drank it because I am, after all, Paulette Kubiak, the wine connoisseur. I hope uh, the behind the scene of this video gives you an incredible insight of the work that goes into making a feature film and the appreciation that people who make it all possible deserve uh, for their creative and hard work. Let's say if a filmmaker or a producer feels like as if he or they have the urge to cut off a bootlegger's head, I would not condone the idea. But at the same time, I would also understand their frustration. For On Camera, I'm with Mag Billow. Until the next time.